guidance of the word today, man, this this here is is um uh uh uh, uh again I, I believe just a solid word and it's right on time for I believe all of us. So if you get your Bibles, you get your Bibles, you get your word, you get your word, you get your word. You get your word, and I need you to lift it high, wherever you are, whether you're using digital or whether you're using um, um, hard copy. I need you to lift it high, and I need you to say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. It is the true word of God. It is the true word of God. And I believe, I believe every word in it. Every word in it. Simply because, Simply because it's God's very breath. God's very breath. Let's go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 24. No, not Mark, which we could have, and we're going to kind of summarize some things in Mark with this particular story, but we're, we're in Luke today, Luke. <laughs> Luke chapter 24, Luke chapter 24. chapter 24, beginning at verse 1. Luke 24, beginning at verse 1. If you got it, say, I got it. Got it. All right, here we go. <laughs> verse 1. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb. Talking about the ladies, the women, they went to the tomb, Okay. They went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened, they bowed their faces to the ground. And the men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all uh, of the rest. We are continuing the teaching, the authority of Jesus. And today we're talking about, matter of fact, we're wrapping it up today. Today we're going to wrap it up by talking about or, or, or saying and showing and proving that Jesus has authority over death. That Jesus has authority over over death. And we've been talking about what it means when we say Jesus has the authority. That means that Jesus is Lord. He is the final authority. He is the first and the last. He's the genesis to revelation. He is the alpha and the omega. He is beginning and the end. He is the great I am. He is, matter of fact, Jesus says all power and all authority has been given to me. That God has placed, the Father has placed Jesus above everything and everyone. That there is no one like him. He will reign and rule over everyone. He's Lord of lords and he's king of kings. That there is no one compared to his greatness. There is no one compared to his power. No one has a power like he has. Nothing can compare to him. And we talked about how Jesus um, was even greater than Moses. And you know how great Moses was? God gave him the Ten Commandments. But you know how great Moses was? Uh, you know how great Abraham was? You know how great Elijah was? You know how great Elisha was? You know how great David was? You know how great uh, Daniel was? You know how great all these great people were? You know how great Isaiah was? You know how great all these great people were? They, none of them could compare to Jesus. 
Paul says it best, I think, in Scripture. He says, man, uh, I mean, John the Baptist says it. John the Baptist says it best. He says, man, behold the Lamb of God. Listen, I'm not even worthy enough to tie his shoes, his sandals. And Jesus says, all power, all authority has been given to me. That Jesus has power over, uh, over the spirits, over demons. That Je Matter of fact, the Bible says that not only does demons tremble at the name of Jesus, but they even bow to Jesus. That's a sign of surrender. That's a sign of submission. And, uh, uh, and then we talk about how Jesus even has authority over afflictions. That even the deaf and the mute and, 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 and the people who have all these afflictions, these afflictions uh, 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 bow and stop when Jesus says stop. Even the storms, even the nature has to stop when Jesus says be silent. And now we're going to look at it of how even death couldn't stop Jesus. Mm -hmm. That Jesus has authority over death. I love the Apostle Paul's letter to the Corinthian church. Because the Corinthian church was a church that, man, if you read the scripture, you understand that this church was a dysfunctional church. And can I say this for those people who say, I'm still trying to find the right church, I'm still trying to find the perfect church, you ain't going to never find the perfect church. Because a perfect church means that there must be perfect people. And there is no perfect people, right? Um, um, uh, uh, so you might want to pray about uh, changing the mindset of your search. <laughs> um, but I love uh, uh, the Apostle Paul's writing to this church because he's, he's trying to establish order in the church. And just a side note, I shared this in one of my classes. Man, the Bible, um, 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 uh, if there was a, an accurate movie of the Bible, no Hollywood script, no, we gonna, no copying and editing and, and oh, we're going to cut this out. If they would just do line for line, word for word, text for text, man, the Bible would probably be rated off. It will be a rated R movie, right? Simply because the Bible has everything in it. It has everything. I mean, you 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 talk about it. You you imagine, you think about it. That's what it has in it. It has your your action. It has your romance. It has your your uh, your conflict. It has your violence. It has your gore. It has all the things you can ever imagine in there. And in the in the book of 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 uh, 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 First Corinthians. Um, the Corinthian church would fit in perfectly with a Bible movie because they were jacked up as well. Not only do you have people taking communion to actually get drunk, not only are you having people say, you know what, forget the widows and all that stuff. Now nah, we're going to eat first. We're going to do, we, it's, all, it's me, myself, and I. But they had people within the church that were sleeping with their in-laws. How nasty is that? How jacked up is that? Is that not reality TV at its finest right there? Well, we were talking about this in class, and my, my students were talking about, you know what? I can't help. I got to watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians. I got to watch The Real House of Ohio. I'm like, man, and it got you hooked on it. I said, every week, it has you, oh, I got to see what's happening next week. I got to see what's happening next week. I got to see what's happening. That's the way the Bible is. When I read it, I'm like, ooh, I need to see what's happening in the next chapter. I need to see what's happening in the next chapter. Because it's all full of, of just some things you're like, man, this has my attention. And the book of Corinthians is just like that. Or the Corinthian church, excuse me. It's just like that. And Paul writes his letter to the Corinthian church to establish order. And so he talks about worship. Uh, how we need to conduct ourselves during worship. He talks about your spiritual gifts. He talks about uh, uh, loving one another. And then he talks about, in 1 Corinthians, I believe in chapter 15, he gets to the point to where he just begins to talk about the, 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 the basics of Christianity, and that's the resurrection. He talks about the resurrection, and he says, man, um, uh, um, that Christ uh, 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 didn't stay dead. He rose from the grave, just like he said. He rose from the grave. And then he talks about that the dead will rise in Christ. The dead will rise in Christ. And, and what he's saying when the dead will rise in Christ, he said that if you have a relationship with Jesus, you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior, then death is not the end of your story. 
that you will resurrect when Christ comes to get us. You will rise again. But then he goes even deeper into the text, into his letter, and he begins to talk about uh, a resurrected body. And he begins to make that comparison or that analogy using the word perishable and imperishable. And he says that, man, your, your resurrected body is going to be great. It's going to be, I mean, it's, it's, you're going to see the radiance of God. You're going to see the radiance of Jesus over your resurrected body. You ain't going to look how you used to look. And then he, he even goes deeper into the text and let us know that when we accepted Jesus Christ as our, as, as our Lord and Savior, that um, death no longer has a sting. What does that mean? That means that when Jesus defeated death, that when he resurrected, when he rose from the grave, when he came up out of that tomb, that death lost all of its power. It has no, it no longer calls the shots. And, and so Paul says that, 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 that uh, uh, his resurrection has swallowed up death. And then he goes deep into the, he says, oh death, where is your sting? In other words, you used to sting, it used to hurt. Yes, it hurts us physically and emotionally because no one wants to lose a loved one. No one wants to die. However, the body of Christ then begins to rejoice. Why? Because we understand that that person who may have passed, they had a life that was uh, uh, in line with God's life, in line with God's word. They received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So we don't look at death as a terrible thing anymore. We look at it as a celebration thing now because we understand death wasn't this person, is not this person final, or the cemetery, or the, or the, or the, or the coffin, is not this person's final say, or, or final destination. But because Jesus has defeated death, guess what? We will defeat death as well. And what does that mean? That means that we will spend eternity with our heavenly father. Oh, death, where is your sting? It no longer hurts anymore because I know that my heavenly father, my creator, uh, 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 and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has defeated the very thing that thought it was going to have the final say over my life. And that's death. So now that leads us to the book of Luke, which this story is actually recorded in Matthew and Mark as well. Um, but we're looking at it from the book of, uh, uh, of, of, of or it's recorded in the Gospels. But we're looking at it from Luke's uh, um, uh, perspective. And so now, as we are leading up to chapter 24, Jesus has already, has already been crucified. He's already died. Um, they've already laid him in the tomb. Um, and so now, uh, 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 and, and, and let me give you just some clarity. They've laid him in the tomb, and because people have remembered what Jesus has said, or had said before he died, they wanted to make sure that the tomb was secure. Because Jesus had told them, listen, destroy this temple, and in three days this temple will be rebuilt. This temple will, 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 will be reestablished. This temple will be here. And so he had already told them that he would resurrect. And so the people wanted to make sure that, okay, um, when we lay him in this tomb, let's not only secure it with this stone that can't nobody move, but we're going to place the guards by it. So that way, they can't come, nobody can come and steal the body and then try to claim that he had resurrected. Listen, Satan will always reach down in his pocket and try to pull out any and everything to try to make sure you can't see the goodness of God. That you can't see God moving. That you can't see God working. That's why, that's why uh, uh, my Uncle Bill says, he says this all the time and I will forever remember this. He says, when you don't see God's hand working or God's move, hand moving, man, trust his heart. And I trust the heart of Jesus. Jesus, I know it seems like I'm going through all type of chaos right now. And maybe it seems like you're not moving. But I trust your heart. And I know that you're not a man that you shall lie. And I know you say that this is what, if you promise me this, this is what you're going to do. And so I trust your heart. I trust your heart. And that means I trust your word. Your word says you will never leave me nor forsake me. So therefore, I'm not afraid of anything. Why? Because I know that my God is with me. And so now, that leads us to 
to chapter 24. Chapter 24, verse 1, it says, but on the first day of the week, on the first day of the week, okay, now if I, I, I'm a Bible teacher, and so, you know, I got to go through, through, through the lines on the first day of the week. Many people ask the question, um, okay, well, well why um, uh, do you go to church on Sunday? Why do you go to church on Sunday? Well, that's because we we honor the, the day that our, that our Lord and Savior resurrected from the grave, that he resurrected from the dead. As a matter of fact, all through New Testament, it talks about the Lord's Day, the Lord's Day. On the first day of the week, the Lord's Day. Man, that is Sunday. You wanna, if you want to really talk about the Bible, then let's go there on the first day of the week. That's why we come to church on Sunday. On the first day of the week, that Sunday, when he rose from the day, from the grave, that's the day that we acknowledge. That's the day that we come together to worship, okay? I know it's going to make some religious people mad right there. Talking about, oh, what about the Sabbath? What about Sabbath? We can talk about the Sabbath a whole other day. But we're going to study that. We're going to make you study that thing, right? All right, it says, but on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb. Talking about the two ladies, Mary and Martha. They went to the tomb. They went to the tomb. And we're going to talk about this. Watch this. Taking the spices they have prepared. Taking the spices that they have prepared. Okay, so watch this. This is why this is so important. That we can't just skip over this and just get to the other part. They went to the tomb early in the morning and they took some spices they had prepared. Those spices were to anoint the body. Okay? Now let me tell you what that means. They went to anoint the body. Now in culture, uh, uh, matter of fact, uh, um, um, uh, uh, in culture, uh, uh, they went to anoint a dead body. Watch this. And the reason they did that is because of the smell and the stench. Okay? They were like, man, uh, 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 we, 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 we're just going to make them smell good. We're going to make them smell better. We're going to make the... The women themselves did not believe that Jesus wouldn't be in there. They went to anoint a dead body, believing that Christ was still going to be there. Watch this, man. And that's going to make you understand or really appreciate the next few lines that's within the text. These ladies get up early in the morning and they go to the tomb. They go to the tomb to, to uh, and they prepare these spices. These spices represented these, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, like anointing uh, uh, symbols. And so they go to anoint his body so that way uh, uh, he's not smelling and he's not stenching. Not to anoint the body for anything else. There was nothing um, uh, quote unquote spiritual, spiritual or anything like that. Man, they didn't want it. They, 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 they were thinking about the smell. Okay? And so watch this. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but they did. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in the Gospels, and the other God, I think it's either in Matthew, no, it's in, I think it's in Matthew or even Mark, uh, um, it talks about um, uh, the scriptures actually mention an earthquake. Okay? The scriptures actually mention an earthquake. Uh, 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 and, and, and because, matter of fact, when you read in Luke, it doesn't even talk about the guards being there. But in the other Gospels, it does. It talks about this earthquake that, that, that has taken place. And this earthquake has taken place, um, 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 which, which, can I just tell you something? At this point, it symbolizes the power of God. If this earthquake has, to, uh, has taken place, it removes the stones and it freaks out the guards so much <laughs> that the guards say, we got to get up out of here. The power of God and the presence of God is important. It is truly important that, that we that we um, um, uh, uh, that we make sure that we are operating in God's presence and under God's anointing every single day of our life. Watch this. Why? Because that's what Satan is afraid of. The guards were there to stop anybody from removing the body. But when the guards felt the power, the power and the presence of God, the guards said, we got to get up out of here. Well, ooh! The guards were there on the assignment. Mm -hmm. Satan will 
sin. Hate is on assignment to stop you from truly seeing what God has for you. The guards were placed there because of the Roman authority. They were placed there to make sure that no one could see or, or, or get the body of Jesus. So they were placed there to stop anyone and everyone from coming, to, 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 to try to take the body away. But when the power of God and the presence of God shows up, mm -hmm. the enemy has to flee. Yeah. The importance of the power and the presence of God over our lives cannot even be described. Because I find it very interesting that the same people who are trained military train to stop anyone and everything from getting close to the body of Jesus is now fleeing because they because they, they feel in the presence of Jesus. There is nothing that can stop the power of God. Watch this. And I know this may sound basic and I know this may sound elementary. But until we realize how important the anointing of God is, the presence of God is, and the power of God is, then we will never be able to defeat Satan. Mm -hmm. The reason why so many people quit and give up and throw in the towel is because they are not relying on the Holy Spirit. They're not relying on God's presence and God's power and God's anointing to truly, to truly take root. Man. Because the guards are there for intimidation. Because the guards are there to make sure no one can steal the body. And watch this. And the text says that when the women got there, the stone was already rolled away. The guards are no longer to be found. They're nowhere to be found. And the stone is rolled away. Watch this. The guards who are military trained not to fear anything have took out a run and said, we don't want no part of this because we don't know what's going on. They were kind of frightened. They, they were like, wait a minute, we're confused. 
We, we don't know. We, we know our Lord was placed here. We know he's here, uh, but, but, but we don't see the body. Look what happens. And while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. That, apparel, that means they had on these white, uh, 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 shiny, uh, the, the, the radiance of, 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 these, of, of, of these, these angels, the, the radiance of them. Um, um, was so uh, 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 um, uh, uh, bright that, that it just it really got their attention and they got fearful. Look what the text says. And as they were frightened, they bowed their faces to the ground and the men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? Okay, watch this. I'm going to go back to, to, to me going to a cemetery. Now, I already told you a couple weeks ago, I don't like haunted houses. Right? And I remember watching a YouTube video. YouTube, man, I probably got to stop YouTube. I remember watching a YouTube video not too long ago of these police officers going to the cemetery. You know, they had the flashlight on. Uh, they're trying to make sure that, you know, that I guess they had got a report that somebody's in there, you know, and they're playing around, climbing around. And as they go through the cemetery, they got their flashlight on. It was a male and a female. The male had the light. He's flashing the lights. All of a sudden, he hears a scream. Ah! He hears the scream. He needs the female. <laughs> he dropped the flashlight. He takes off run. The female is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. The male was like, nah, I'm out of here. He takes off run. That, that would be me, babe. I love you. That would be me. I'm probably going to leave you, right? Shame. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just speaking facts. Okay, um, so the police officer leaves. So I imagine going to the cemetery and I don't see, I see a hole in the ground, I see I see an empty uh, casket, and all of a sudden I, I hear and see these people that have frightened me so much. I bow and I bow down in surrender and submission because I know that someone who, 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 who has authority over me or is higher than me or, or more powerful than me, I said, man, why do you seek the living amongst the dead? Look what he said before we go back to that, before we chop, chop that up. Look what they say. They say, why do you seek the living from the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you? That's key. Remember what he told you? Do you remember what he said uh, while, he was, while he was here? Do you remember the message he gave you? Do you remember what he told you when he was in Galilee? Do you, do you remember that he said that, man, listen, that, that he was going to be crucified uh, um, by sinful people um, and he was going to die, but in three days later he was going to rise? Do you remember him telling you that? Then why are you seeking the dead, I mean the living amongst the dead? Well, the reason why many of us have not truly received the blessings of God or, or have not reached our full potential or have not reached our purpose is because we're looking for life in the graveyard. We're looking for life. We're looking for purpose in dead situations. We're looking for life. We're looking for purpose in the cemetery. We're looking for life. We're looking for purpose at the graveyard. And God has said, why do you keep trying to seek success? Why do you keep trying to seek purpose? Why do you keep thinking that I'm here amongst the dead? I ain't here. And you keep trying to think and you keep, and you keep wondering, thank you God, you keep wondering why you're not growing. You keep wondering why you're stuck in this cycle. You keep wondering why you're stuck in this rut. You keep wondering why your head can't get above water. It's because you're seeking life at the graveyard. And, 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 the, and the angel said, why do you seek the living amongst the dead? He ain't here. God ain't here. Jesus ain't here. But you keep going back to that relationship. But wait a minute. Jesus ain't in it. But you keep going back to old habits. Wait a minute. Jesus ain't in it. But you keep going back to old situations. Wait a minute. But Jesus ain't in it. So why do you keep thinking things are going to get better when Jesus ain't in it? You keep seeking the living amongst the dead. And you wonder why things are not getting better any better you will never find life not the life that God has for you 
at the graveyard. These ladies go and prepare these spices to put on our Lord and Savior. They found out that this, watch this, thank you God, you know it has to be the power of God because uh, if you study the text, you understand that this stone could not be removed by just individuals. It could not be moved. It could not, like, like you couldn't move it. I don't care how much you try to push and how much you try to pull and how much you try to tug. It could not be moved. And I truly believe, watch this, um, I think that, that the, the government authorities thought that they were getting the heaviest stone that they possibly could to try to make sure nobody can break in. But I truly believe it was God setting this up to show his true glory to let us know, listen, no, man can't move it, but I can't. Woo! God has his own way to reveal who he truly is, man. And one of the ways he truly revealed who he is is that go get the heaviest rock you think you can find. Go get the heaviest stone you think you can find. And let me show you how powerful I am. I'm the same one who can calm the storm. I'm the same one that can make the deaf speak. Thank you, God. I'm the same one that can make the deaf hear. I'm the same one that can make the lame get up and walk. I'm the same one that has the, all these creative ways that people may think is crazy, but I can use it to heal you. I'm the same one that calms the seas. I'm the same one that tells the demons, don't get in the swine. I'm the same one that, 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 that many people say, wait a minute. Who, who is this? That even the wind and the waves obey him. That, that, that who is this that he makes the deaf hear and the meat speak? Who, who is this person? I'm the same one to where when Isaiah truly realized who I was, he said, man, woe is me. Wait a minute. God, I won't send me. I'm the one who wants to go out and serve. I, I am the, God is the great I am. He is the only one that Pharaoh says, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to let your people, I'm going to let the people go. He, he is the only one that can part the Red Sea. He is the only one that can bring plagues. He is the only one who can, who can send Moses, who, who can allow Moses' mama to put him in the basket and still be found by his own family. He is the only one who can do these great things. There is nobody but our God. He is the only one who can remove the stone. And I think, thank you God, I just want to go here. But I believe there, there are some people who have some stones that is blocking them from seeing the light. There are some stones that, that, that has you wrapped up and bound up and tied to where as much as you're trying to get out, you can't get out because that stone is blocking you. So it reminds me of what? Of the, of the, of the illustration about the frog, the boiling pot. The frog didn't realize every time the frog, the frog was in the water and every time the frog would jump up and try to get out, the pot was, the, the, the lid on the pot was there. Water getting hotter and hotter and hotter. The frog trying to get out of that water, but he keep hitting the pot. And all of a sudden he stops jumping, didn't realize that somebody had removed the lid. And I want to let you know today that we serve a God that I believe that is removing the stone from you to where you can truly experience the freedom that he really wants you to have. But he's maybe he's waiting on you to realize that his power uh, 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 is greater than any authority. His power is greater than any affliction. His power is greater than any spirit. His power is greater than any demon. His power is strong enough to remove the stone away when man thought he had you blocked in. Nothing is impossible with God. And the angels tell the ladies, why do you seek the living amongst the dead? He's not here. Do you remember what he told you while he was in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of, of, of the sinful men to be crucified and on the third day he will rise. And watch this. And they remembered those words. They remembered what Jesus had said. Sometimes we just have to be reminded. 
of the promises from God. Sometimes we just need that little reminder because watch this. Our natural eyes will tell us one thing. And sometimes we have to be reminded, okay, don't be moved by what you see, but be reminded of what his word says. Yes. Because we operate out of, the, out, of, out of the natural so much that we forget what God has promised us. And God said, Jesus Christ says this is himself, that in three days he will be resurrected. And because the ladies were looking at it from this standpoint and a fearful standpoint, that they forgot what Jesus had said. And they had to be reminded of what Jesus had said. Can I, can I, can I, let me say this real quick, and then I know we got to go. Let me say this real quick before we get just uh, uh, to talk about the authority of Jesus. Whenever you read, this is a Bible, this is a Bible tip, Bible study tip. Whenever you read a, a, a scripture or you read a scripture and you've been, and you say you, you grew up reading that scripture, don't think you know everything about that scripture. And don't think that God can't give you a different revelation with that scripture. Because there are scriptures that I have read all my life. And every time I read it, God's giving me something different. Same meaning, the, 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 the context of the scripture doesn't change. But, but, but the way God wants me to apply it and the revelation of it may change. So sometimes we have to be reminded of what many people may think this is the very basic. But because we think it's the very basic... We feel like, you know what, now, I, 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 I don't need to hear that. I need to, I need to hear something else now. I, I'm past that type of, 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 of knowledge now. I'm past that type of word now. I'm past that. We've got to be reminded mm -hmm. of the promises that Jesus has given us. Yes. And if Jesus has promised you this, if he's promised you freedom, if he's promised you uh, 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 that he would never leave you nor forsake you, if he's promised you that, that you're going to get out of that pit, if he's promised you uh, 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 some great things for your future, if he's promised you these things, then stand on that promise. Don't let that stone discourage you from walking towards your promise. Man. And so then the, 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 it says... And they remembered his words, and returning to the, and returning from the tomb, they went and told these things to the eleven and to all the rest. I love this as we get ready to close. Jesus was dead. Because <laughs> I, 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 think, I think that's something we got to make sure that we stress. Jesus had died. He, said, he says on the, on the cross, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Right? Like, he took his, the Bible says he took his last breath. He died. He had no life left in him. They take him off the cross. They put him in the tomb. The authorities say, we got to make sure the tomb is secure. Because we don't want people going to steal the body so they won't try to claim that he resurrected like he said he would. The problem was is that God's power caused something to happen and the stone is now moved away. The guards who were there at the tomb is no longer there. The ladies, knowing Jesus' his body is there, they go to the tomb with the spices they have prepared to anoint his body. They go to the tomb, the body is no, no longer there. They get spooked out, get freaked out, because not only do they not see the body, but they see these heavenly beings. They say, why are you seeking the living amongst the dead? The dead is not here, uh, uh, but, he, but do you not remember what he told you that he would rise? The ladies remember what, they to, what Jesus had told them. Go and tell the other disciples or the other apostles exactly what, Jesus, what, uh, uh, exactly what had happened. Watch this. There was nothing magical that took place. 
It was Jesus revealing who he really is. That he even tells death what it can and cannot do. Oh my goodness. That death thought it had Jesus swallowed up. Celebrate. Okay, let me give you an example. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Watch this. Um, <laughs> I remember in high school, and I don't even talk about this much. But I remember in high school, um, my senior year, um, we were playing uh, Nacogdoche Central Heights. We just knew we were going to state this year, number two in the state, right? Only lost one game, and that was a buzzer beater, and then that was against Itasca. And then we came back and played Itasca like two weeks later and beat them by 20 points, right? We're playing Nacogdoche Central Heights. I'm having a pretty decent game. Having like, I got like 27 points. I remember I hit a shot. The go-ahead bucket. Three seconds left. I remember, and they may be, well, I know one of them may be watching this right now. My cousin Pula, right? He came to the church once before. My cousin Pula and my homeboy Willie. Okay, let me say their real names. Milton and Alvin. Okay. I remember them on the sideline. Cause they crunk out of store. We celebrate, we happy, everything great. Them jokers. Talking about, oh man, who gonna bring the PlayStation to the hotel? We going to the next round, who gonna bring the PlayStation? They talking about bringing the PlayStation, talking about what they gonna do in the hotel room and all this stuff. It's still three seconds on the clock. That team takes that ball out of bounds, make one pass, shoots it from half court off the backboard, goes in, we lose. They begin to celebrate too early. And I believe that that's what death did with Jesus. That death began to celebrate too early. People thought everything was over. Oh, there will be no more discussion about this Jesus, the Messiah. There will be no more discussion about this one who, who says you can heal, who says you can walk on water. There will be no more discussion about this. Oh, we've already killed him. But oh, Jesus has the final say. That he has, the, he has authority and he rules over death. Right when death thought it was victorious, Jesus says, oh, death, where is this thing? Right when death think it has you, right when a tomb think it has you, right when a stone think it has you, you look at it and say, man, but my God is bigger. My God is stronger. My God is more powerful. Oh, death, where is this thing? We ought to celebrate the fact that we serve a God who has authority mm -hmm. over all. Even over death. The authority of Jesus. Meaning Jesus has the final authority. Which means that Jesus is Lord and ruler. Even over death. Woo, man. I wish we could go deeper into that. That he reigns and rules over death. And we no longer have to fear death. Because he already defeated death. Oh, death, where is this thing? Let me pray for us. Father, I thank you. And I love you and I thank you for teaching us that death has lost all of its power and all of its authority because our Savior has, has risen and defeated. So everything Satan tries to use to uh, his fear tactics, we can say this, the devil is a liar. Ooh. That the devil is a liar. That the enemy is defeated. That the devil is a liar and the enemy is defeated. That the devil is a liar and the enemy is defeated. And Jesus is victorious and that makes us victorious. Because he dwells within us. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you for choosing us. <laughs> and we thank you for not allowing death to defeat you so that we can now defeat death. But it's only because of you and nobody else. 
We thank you for this church. We thank you for everything that you're doing. We thank you for, God, you're just so great. You're so great. We thank you for health. We thank you for our life and our, and our strength, Father God. We thank you for boldness. We thank you for courage. But most important, we thank you for the work that was done on the cross. And not only the work that was done on the cross, but the work that defeated death. Oh, death, where is your sting? Jesus is our resurrected king. We pray for those who need healing right now. Jesus, we ask that you heal them. You touch them right where they are. We pray for those who need your love and your grace right now. We pray for everybody, Father God. We pray for Full of Faith Bible Church. We're so grateful for everything that you're doing. And as we depart from each other, we pray that your presence, your anointing never departs from us. And we will stop looking and seeking the living in the graveyard amongst the dead. We thank you and we love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all God's people said, amen.